Hello, welcome. This is the third time I've tried to make this video. The first time last Thursday, the monthly weather alarm up the hill went off and overwhelmed everything. It lasted for almost 30 seconds. The second time we got about two-thirds of the way through the video and an emergency vehicle came down the street behind me making all kinds of racket. So we'll try one more time late in the day today with the sun shining brightly. As you can see I've made a few changes here to my practice area. Some good and some not so good. When I first built this little practice area I put a French drain in it, drained the water right out from behind the mat here, around behind the camera and down the hill. And it worked out wonderful. If we had an overnight rain, I came out the next day and practiced all I wanted to. But if we had a lot of rain, and we have had about 11 days worth of rain in the last two weeks, the whole area became saturated and the mat was practically floating on water. So. I decided to raise it about three inches and that worked out beautifully. Put some cool season grass in when I landscaped around the edges. Now I can hit some side hill lies, downhill lies, uphill lies. So that's all worked out well. But I decided last summer toward the end of the season, there was just a little too much shade here. Many years ago, I planted a pine tree right behind the mat there about this big around. I remember picking it up with one arm and setting it in the ground. But like my kids and my grandkids, it just kept growing, keeps growing. And it was throwing just too much shade in this area. And I wanted to put a little bit tougher turf grass in around the mat. So some zoysia grass, which is a warm season grass. It's one of the two best turf grasses in the world, really. So while the shade was welcome, when the temperature was 95 to 100, it was just too much shade, too much of the time. So I decided to cut the tree down. And having once owned 160 acres in the central part of the state, which was half tree and half pasture land, I had cut down many, many trees. And I thought I knew what I was doing. So I knocked the lower side of the tree so when I made the cut, it would fall down the yard there, and I'd have plenty of room to trim out all the branches. And then right as I was making a final cut with my chainsaw, and it should have been yelling timber and watching it go down, I noticed it wasn't. And there was a breeze coming from the opposite direction, which I finally realized a little too late. So I stepped out of the way, I heard a loud crack, and the tree went over behind me. So I have a little bit of cleanup left to do. A lot of pine boughs, branches, pine needles scattered everywhere. But most of the tree is chopped up behind me and waiting to cure out for a few years so we can use it for firewood. Best laid plans, right? I got a nice text message a while back from somebody named Tony Fruhoff. And he asked me to talk a little bit more about wrist load. It's really pretty simple, Tony. You grip the club in your fingers, not in your fists. As I have explained in the past, point the club straight up to the sky. Make sure that your arm is parallel with the ground. And you're 90 degrees. You can grab the club in the mid shaft like so. Get down here in the hitting position. And there you are, 90 degrees simple, right? Too easy. However, when I first started giving lessons, I was very emphatic about teaching a half swing. What you do from this point on is your business, but if you can learn to get the club in this position right here, and come down and through with a nice full release, you're on the right track. However, I always insisted on the 90 degree rule here, holding this angle as you come down into the shot. What I didn't know was not everybody can get their wrist to 90 degrees. I've got a friend I've been playing with for the last 30 years. He's a lot bigger than I am, and he should hit the ball 50 yards past me, clearly, but he never has. 
And a few years ago, I was trying to demonstrate this 90 degree thing, and I said, take the club like so and bring it back, and we got it to about right here, and he said, whoa, ow. He said, that's as far as his wrist would go. So, some people can't get there 90 degrees, and if you're having trouble, Tony, that might be the reason right there. Not all of us can do 90 degrees. On the other hand, with the Masters coming up this week, there'll be a lot of talk about Sergio Garcia and about lag. He had a lot of lag in his swing. You've heard that term many times if you watch much televised golf on Sergio's play. What that simply means is Sergio uniquely can bend his wrist more than 90 degrees. I read a couple of years ago he can get it to about 110 degrees. For me to do that, I would have to, well, I can't do it. For me to get the position in that position I would have to let go with my fingers when he comes down into the ball and he drops down on the inside because he's able to load his wrist more than 90 degrees he's got all of this lag coming into the shot that the rest of us don't have so imagine the advantage he has as he comes down in you're at 90 degrees he's way back here when he releases through the bottom of through the hitting area here he develops that much more club head speed because there's that much more loaded power right here as he comes down into the ball. I hope that helps. And if it does, I'd appreciate it if you'd give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hi. And I'll send you the next lesson in about a week. Thanks for watching.